AliExpress has basically anything and everything you could ever think of, from cheap plastic crap to luxury vehicles. <laughs> but somewhere in the middle of all of that is this salvaged X79 motherboard, CPU and RAM bundle with a twist. A platform originally designed for high-end servers has found a new life as the perfect bang for the buck mid-range gaming system. So let's jump straight in and find out what makes this quite so special. The bundle that we're going to be looking at today includes this ATX X79 motherboard, an Intel Xeon E5 2689 8-core 16-thread CPU and 16GB of DDR3 ECC memory. But the price for all of that? Just £120, including two week shipping from China. That's incredibly reasonable when you consider that the motherboard is technically speaking brand spanking new. But more on that later. Okay then, so let's go ahead and get this bundle assembled. Now luckily for you guys at home, this bundle is already going to come with the CPU pre-installed. But considering I've already taken this apart, I'm going to need to get that reinstalled right here. So let's take a look at the motherboard and see what makes it so special. Now, they have certainly cut a few corners that I can see here. Straight away, we're going to notice down here. Most motherboards come with a motherboard battery. In fact, I don't know of any major brands that don't include a motherboard battery, but this one doesn't, so I'm going to have to borrow one from another motherboard that I've got lying around. Without the motherboard battery, you can still use the motherboard, no problem. However, any sort of BIOS settings and things like that, they're going to be lost every time the computer loses power. So it's definitely worth picking up a motherboard battery if you need one. There we go, we got that installed. That was harder than it should have been. Now, this motherboard actually has some other neat features. Right up here is our VRMs for the power delivery for the CPU. But on this motherboard, it's actively cooled with user replaceable fans. All you need to do is unscrew a couple of screws at the back here, and you can order some new fans on eBay and get them replaced really easily. We've also got some other neat features as well. So straight away here, we've got a postcode display as well as a beeper. Now this beeper, I can tell you now, is incredibly obnoxious. Insert the sound of it here. Yeah, so that's an incredibly irritating noise that you'll hear every single time you turn this PC on. There might be a way of disabling it in the BIOS, but I haven't found it yet. You've also got a postcode display, which is incredibly useful if anything goes wrong and isn't booting properly. Really handy for diagnostics. And you've also got a power and reset button over here as well. Really handy if you're like me and using this on a test bench. That's a really nice feature that you only tend to get on sort of higher end motherboards. So it's nice to see it on this considering how cheap it is. But anyway, let's go ahead and get our RAM installed. As I've already mentioned, the bundle came with 16 gigabytes of ECC DDR3, and that's because this is a server platform, so it makes sense that it requires server ECC RAM. Now, it can be a little bit tricky getting the RAM installed on this board. I found that the uh, DIMM slots weren't quite wide enough, so now that I've installed them a couple of times, it's a little bit easier, but that first time was certainly a challenge. So just bear that in mind when you do get this bundle, but it might take a little bit of extra force than you're used to. Maybe that's just because the manufacturing tolerances aren't fantastic. Having a look at the side of the motherboard here, we've got six SATA ports. Now that's not really as useful as it used to be, considering lots of people are using M.2 SSDs these days. However, having six of them, that's pretty handy, considering that lots of people might be using this for like a home server or a NAS or something like that. Speaking of M.2, Despite X79 never supporting M.2, we actually have support for M.2 SSDs on this board. And not only one, but we've got two of them here. So you might be wondering how they added support for M.2 SSDs despite the fact that X79 never officially supported it. Well, the answer to that is simple. M.2 SSDs run off of PCIe, at least these ones do anyway. And so instead of having a PCIe channel like this one, you just have an M.2 PCI channel like this. So it actually becomes a very simple, it's just a case of you change the connector, change the electronics around, and bish bash bosh, you've got M.2 support. I mean, it's not quite as simple as that, but you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm simplifying. So that's all of our major components installed. Let's take a look at the rest of the motherboard. If I flip this around, right here, one of the first things you're gonna notice, and one of the first things I noticed, was that we've got a built-in IO shield. That's a really nice feature to have. Um, the amount of times I've cut myself on like, replaceable IO shields, and the amount of times I've lost them, I, I, it's too many to count. So on this board, having such a nice built-in IO shield is a really neat feature, and one that probably didn't cost them very much, though it makes me wonder, if they're gonna add a built-in IO shield, why didn't they include a motherboard battery? Really strange decisions here, but either way, it makes it look really, really high end. Though that being said, we have only got two USB 3.0 ports on the back here. The rest are USB 2.0. Now, unfortunately, and 
strangely, this motherboard bundle doesn't actually include a CPU cooler. Now, that is actually more frustrating than it might seem, because X79, having never been a particularly popular platform, at least in the consumer space, makes it quite difficult to find yourself a CPU cooler. Now, luckily for me, I was able to grab one on AliExpress reasonably cheap, but at the same time, I would rather it just came included by default. So here's our CPU cooler. It's nothing fancy, it's just a generic CPU cooler. Okay, so that's the fan installed. And now, before we get to the benchmarks, there's a couple more things I want to discuss, just so that you're aware of all the quirks and the extra nice to have features on this motherboard. Down here, you'll notice the IO pins. They are all color coded, which makes it really easy to install. I really like that. Like I said before, we've got six SATA connectors, a USB 3 connector, and a 90 degree 24 pin power connector. Now I know on some cases that's gonna have some sort of clearance tolerance issues, but the vast majority of you guys at home are gonna have no issues with that whatsoever, and it does make it look a lot nicer and a lot sleeker. Coming around to the top of the motherboard, we have also got our CPU power. Now it is an eight pin rather than a four pin, so just bear that in mind, make sure you've got a power supply, which does support an eight pin CPU connector. The question is now, are the CPU and the RAM powerful enough to make this bundle worth it? Because from the motherboard's point of view, things are looking really good. Well, let's take a look at the CPU and RAM included in the bundle. The RAM is actually pretty generic and will likely change slightly between bundles. But in mine, I received two CL15 1600MHz 8GB sticks of Samsung ECC DDR3 RAM. Plenty enough capacity for gaming in 2022, but a big question remains on whether or not it's got the speed that it needs. The CPU unfortunately has the same issue. With 8 cores and 16 threads, it certainly sounds like it's up to spec with modern mid-range CPUs from Intel or AMD in terms of core count, but we're yet to see where it stands in gaming benchmarks. Especially considering that the IPC of this chip is going to be significantly lower than what we're used to with modern CPUs. Because remember guys, it's not all about core count in gigahertz. IPC is one of the biggest factors in CPU performance. So then, let's get this paired up with a GPU and see how it performs in games. For my test bench, I've elected to use an AMD Vega 64. Now I appreciate that some people may take issue with this, citing the fact that this certainly isn't the fastest GPU around, and so could cause a GPU bottleneck. But the likelihood of someone actually pairing this bundle with an RTX 3000 or RX 6000 series graphics card is pretty low, so I've chosen to go with a graphics card that I feel is more likely to be paired with this bundle in a realistic scenario. I'm also running all the benchmarks at 1080p to reduce the chances of any graphics card bottlenecks, so if you guys do want to see this bundle paired with a more modern graphics card, then let me know in the comments below and I'll try to redo the benchmarks with my RX 6800 from my personal rig. Starting out with Civilization 6, a largely CPU heavy game. Running the built-in benchmark tests the system at the later stages of the game when it's most demanding on the CPU and RAM. There are two included benchmarks. The standard benchmark achieved average turn times of 7.21 seconds, whilst the expansion pack Gathering Storm benchmark hit the average turn time of 53.87 seconds. For comparison, here are the results obtained from my personal rig, which is running an R5 3600, 32 gigs of DDR4, and an RX 6800. Thanks to a £1 promotional offer on a month of Xbox Game Pass, we've also got Forza Horizon 5 in our benchmark suite, which after running its built-in benchmark, determined the following settings for the system when using the Radeon Vega 64. With these settings, we just about hit average figures of more than 100 frames per second, which according to Forza, was more CPU bound than GPU bound. Making good use of that Xbox Game Pass, we've also got Age of Empires 4. Playing through the tutorial mission with the default settings, we saw frame rates consistently above 100 frames per second. Far from any form of CPU bottleneck here, so perhaps this is one to retest with our RX 6800 at a later date. Regardless though, impressive results. CSGO is another CPU bound game, but here we saw very playable results with an average FPS well in excess of 100 frames per second, and easily able to take full advantage of the ever more common 144Hz display. Pretty impressive for a CPU that often sells for less than £30. In Minecraft Java Edition, using default settings, I set up a new world and the system achieved more than 60 frames per second averages in pre-rendered chunks. However, we did sometimes see dips below 60 frames per second when attempting to generate brand new chunks. The final game in our test suite is Tomb Raider, and using the built-in benchmark, we determined a GPU bound score of 21%, with an average FPS score of 90. This was certainly a playable experience, despite being held back by our aging processor.
Throwing in some synthetic benchmarks, we've also got Cinebench R23, in which our E5-2689 achieved a single threaded score of 657, without any form of overclocking, putting us roughly in line with second and third generation Intel i5 processors. But thanks to the fact that this CPU was designed for server applications which can take advantage of strong multi-threading capabilities, we achieved an impressive multi-core score of 5813, putting us within reach of the i7-7700K. I also tested using the 7-zip compression and decompression benchmark, which saw us achieve roughly 45 to 50 gips in decompression and compression. This translates to a score of 45,000 to 50,000 MIPS, making this CPU firmly in the median of the benchmark table and comparable to an 8-core Ryzen 2700 or i7-8700 processor. So whilst all those benchmarks are certainly not terrible, they're also not great. And that feeling of mediocrity, well, it's the start of a pattern. Remember how I mentioned previously that this motherboard wasn't quite brand new? Well, that's because of the chipset. See, this motherboard is X79, a chipset that hasn't been manufactured for several years now. So how are they getting them? Well, at one stage or another, a server motherboard would have finished its life in a server, been recycled or resold, and one way or another, found its way into the hands of the Chinese factory that made this motherboard. From there, the server board would have been disassembled and the chipset reclaimed at which point it would have been resolded to the new board that I have here. And so this brand new motherboard is actually powered by a chipset manufactured all those years ago, which doesn't necessarily mean that it will fail. And I'm a huge believer in the whole reduce, reuse, recycle mindset, but it's worth keeping in mind if that sort of thing's important to you. And so then, is this bundle worth it? Well, assuming you have exactly the price of this bundle to spend, let's take a look at some different alternatives. Looking on eBay, we have loads of options for a CPU and motherboard bundle to choose from in this price bracket, and most of them certainly won't perform as well as what we have here. Take this for instance, this is a bundle which costs almost the exact same price, except we've got no RAM and a much, much weaker CPU. This next bundle features a slightly newer CPU than our aging Xeon, but it's an i3 with significantly fewer cores. That being said, it does include a Gigabyte branded motherboard and the same capacity of RAM as our AliExpress bundle. So far, things are looking pretty good for our AliExpress bundle, but unfortunately for it, that doesn't last for long. If you're a savvy shopper, then you can almost certainly find better used deals. Take this as an example. This bundle includes the same 16GB of RAM, an ASUS branded motherboard, and an i7-4770. Sure, it's certainly not a new CPU, but it's certainly newer and faster than the Xeon in our AliExpress bundle, despite having fewer cores and threads. In fact, just this week, I purchased a bundle with an i5-6400, 8GB of DDR4 RAM, and an ASUS H110M motherboard. All of that for just £80, making it roughly 60% of the price of our AliExpress bundle. And unlike our AliExpress bundle, most of these bundles come with an included heatsink for the CPU, which would otherwise cost you about £15 to £20 to purchase separately. And so then, who is this AliExpress deal actually for? Well, once you start to look at the actual benchmarks and performance, these bundles tend not to make much sense. They're designed to blow you away with their face value specs. It's easy to see 8 cores and 16 threads, 16 gigs of RAM, and a fancy feature-rich motherboard, all for the price of £120, and think you're getting an absolute bargain. But when you look at the speed of those cores and realise that you'd be better off with fewer, but faster cores, then eBay used bundles seem to make a bit more sense. The AliExpress bundle is absolutely great, or at least the motherboard is. The value proposed by the motherboard is what makes me really, really want to recommend this, but the underwhelming performance of those eight cores and the almost non-existent upgrade path really limit this bundle in a lot of ways. So whilst I won't be recommending it to most people, I'm sure something like this would work well for some. It's got enough performance for basic gaming and would work brilliantly in a budget system where you mostly want it to look great. So I wouldn't be surprised to see more of these bundles popping up in pre-builds from smaller resellers and hobbyists, because many of those are sold on looks and flashy specs alone, making this bundle pretty much perfect. Not to mention the reliability of being able to source a cheap bundle and know exactly the performance you're going to get without having to worry about what's available and what's not available in the used market on eBay. Ultimately guys, I think it's a, it, it, it has a value proposition for some, but not for the majority. Anyway, this is, this should be in the little box bit in the corner of the video now, hopefully. Yeah, that, that's the plan when I'm editing this, so if I'm, not, if I'm not up in the corner of the video, something's gone terribly wrong. And this is the favourite bit, because this is the bit where I get to ramble. I just get to keep on talking to extend out the video. Are we at the 10 minute mark yet? I've got no idea. Hopefully so, because that means 
more ads. Wait, sorry guys. I need that moolah.